How's it going on, everybody? How's it going on, everybody? No, that's not right. How's it going, everybody? It is Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, talking about what happened across the markets, taking a look specifically at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. And I also want to share with you all what I personally did today in the stock market. What stocks am I trading, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching here and that I'm looking to trade in the future as we're wrapping up this month of January in 2020. And you guys saw the markets today. The markets are actually still live right now. I'm recording with about one hour left in the day and it's pretty bloody out there. We'll talk about what ended up causing this drop and kind of my thoughts on this correction. It's not a correction. I don't know why I keep saying that, but kind of my thoughts on this little dip that we are seeing in the stock market. So before we do get into all of that good stuff, all I ask from you actually is if you enjoy this video, simply go down below for me and hit that like button and also consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see further content from me and consider joining our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group and claim your two free stocks from Webull which are linked down below with a simple deposit of 100 bucks and those two free stocks, they're going to be valued up to 14 1500 bucks. So all that good stuff is linked down below in the description box. Now, let's just get down and dirty guys and talk about what ended up going down today in this market. So right now you can see the SPX, the S&P 500 that is, is down $28.66 at the time that I'm recording this video. And again, we have about 57 minutes left in the market. So anything can really happen after this recording. But as of right now, this is what's happening. And if we zoom in a bit to this one day, one minute chart, we can see actually here in the past couple of minutes, the S&P double bottomed at around 3280, 3281 to be exact. And we've actually been climbing out of this downtrend that we've been in for the entire day. And you're looking at this and you're like, yeah, we have been in a downtrend and it's weird because we actually opened up and we almost hit an all-time high. We opened up green this morning. I think we were shy of, of about a couple points from that all-time high and that's where we dumped very, very aggressively. And you'll see the same price action here on the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ and many of you guys know why the markets fell today. But let me give you a quick rundown. I have some notes here on my phone that I want to share with you all regarding to this, but the stock market today dumped due to the Chinese virus spreading. And we've been talking about how over the past couple of months, the market hasn't really seen bad news to the point that warrants a sell-off. And I feel like people out there, the market in general, it's been waiting for something negative like this. This is pretty bad, guys. It's not extremely bad like maybe you know, as bad as the trade war was at, you know, its heatest, its hottest moments, that is, but it's still pretty bad. People are losing their lives. This virus is spreading, right? And I feel like, again, the market's been waiting for this, uh, some piece of negative news, like really negative news to drag it down. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. And now that I'm looking at this chart, we haven't seen any sort of correction like this 1% in a day. And again, it's not a correction. I don't know why I keep saying that, but we haven't seen a pull down like this in a very long time. Take a look. The last time was back in the beginning of December. And I'm not even sure if this was a one. Yeah, it actually was a one to 2% uh, uh, pull down. And the time before that, the last time that we saw any other major uh, sort of pull down, this was actually a more major pull down uh, uh, than the previous one was back in September, in the middle of September, when the SPX went from 3013 down to about 2880. That was a, a sell-off of around 4 to 5%. So the disease here that's causing this little pull-down, which originated in central Chinese town of Wuhan, has already left dozens of people dead and more than 800 infected as it spreads throughout Asia and as far 
as the United States, guys. I believe for my research, one person was infected here in the U.S. until, was it today that the second person was found infected? And that's maybe why the U.S. markets are pulling down as well. But at least 10 cities in central I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this name, but I will just for you guys. Hubei, uh, H-U-B-E-I, province are facing travel restrictions, including Wuhan. Major cities, including Beijing, have canceled some or all major Lunar New Year celebrations, a rare drastic step to rein in the spread of the virus. So over there in China, guys, I'm sure... It is mayhem in terms of containing this virus. We'll talk about a stock here in a couple of minutes, actually, where they had to close down a location over in China that's caused the stock to sell off quite a bit just today. And I'm sure you guys can probably guess what that stock is. So before we get to down this side tangent in terms of uh, this, what's going on in China and how it's affecting the market. Let's actually talk about what happened to the Dow Jones here. The Dow Jones, well, what's happening to the Dow Jones since, again, the market is live right now. The Dow Jones down 160 points here, down 0.55%. And it seems like on the four-hour chart, this is a little pullback, a little healthy pullback that we are holding that 50 SMA. It's main maintaining that moving average, which like we've been mentioning on the channel here recently, that level has been a support over the past couple of months. So this is good. The S&P, the Dow, despite this craziness that's going on, they're still holding their long term in terms of the six month uh, chart here, their longer term moving average uh, support levels, which is a solid sign. And if we look here on the daily chart, we can see we popped up, we almost hit an all time high this morning, and then boom, we ended up selling off aggressively, shaving almost 400 points. Actually, it might have been 400 points from the top to bottom here on the Dow Jones. But now, over the past couple of minutes, we've been seeing this rally back up. We've been seeing the breakout of the daily moving averages, both the 50 and the 180 SMA, which is a good sign here that, on a technical basis at least, this uptrend may be slowly starting to continue. And what I'm looking for, guys, is on Sunday... What are their futures going to open up at? This is key. And what are their futures going to look like on Monday morning? Because let's say the futures are gapping down Sunday heading into Monday. Well, what is that going to tell me? Well, that's going to tell me that we may be breaking this long-term uh, support, and that's not going to be too good here from a bullish perspective. And from there, we may be seeing an even further correction, maybe one that or a pull down rather, maybe one that can match what we saw back in September, where again we saw the S and P go down about five percent, um, down to uh, you know roughly uh, that level that we talked about. What was it, twenty eight hundred on the S and P? And if we saw that same five percent correction now on the Dow, believe it or not, that would put us right on top of that one eighty SMA, which would be a pretty healthy correction in my opinion, or a pullback again. I don't know why I keep saying correction because correction is when the market goes down 20% or more. That's what's considered a correction, right? So now on the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ's down 1% here, down about 90 points at the time that I'm recording this video. And we hit a high, I believe it was, was that this morning? Um, it might have been overnight here on the futures. Either way, we hit a high at about 92.87. And from there, we saw this drastic drop of around 100 points. 110 points was the lowest point the NASDAQ was at today, I believe. And overall, just like the S&P and the Dow, the positive sign here is we are still holding the moving average, the 50 SMA, as a support here on the four-hour chart. And if we zoom in a bit to that daily chart, we can see we are already breaking that 50 SMA, the downtrend that started really overnight heading into the whole day today. And now we're looking to test that 180 SMA and break it. So these are just some key levels that I'm watching on the NASDAQ the Dow, the S&P, and kind of what's been going on these past couple of days that has put a lot of pressure on the market here. And again, guys, I feel like the market has been looking for something to correct on. Not correct, but just see a little healthy pull down on. And I think this is it. And if we see that 50 SMA break on the major markets, 
hey, we may see a 3 4 5% sell-off, maybe back down to, again, that 180 SMA, which we talked about, uh, which could put the S&P maybe down to 3150 3200 This would be um, a, a situation where I'd heavily consider buying the dip on, on uh, maybe some longer-term ETF plays that I have in my long-term accounts um, that I don't really talk about too much on this channel, but that would be a point where I'd consider entering maybe like let's say if I was holding an SPY which is a, a, an S&P 500 index fund that's where I'd consider maybe buying some more right here I'm not looking to buy more because I like buying in on dips in terms of uh, longer term investing and in terms of swing trading as well. So let's talk about that now. What did I do today in terms of my trading? And and by the way, drop a comment, guys, down below. Let me know your thoughts on the market. Do you think we go lower from here? Are you thinking that we bounce to higher highs to all time highs next week? I'm really curious into hearing your opinions on that. So for me today, um, I bought a little bit more. Of, or actually not more, I bought SQ, ticker symbol SQ. And this is one that I shouted out on my Instagram story this morning. And if you guys don't follow me there already, there is uh, a link down below, or I think my username's down below, but my username is at Stasurfest if you guys want to follow me there. And I talked about how this morning... The big, uh, the big break we saw of about um, uh, two dollars in the green as of now. The break above seventy bucks. That's very bullish due to it being a resistance over the past couple of weeks, over the past couple of days, and honestly, due to it being the start of a new channel where the up resistance, the um, um, um what's the word, uh, the the max we can make here is up to about seventy five bucks, at least in terms of this channel. So for me. That's an attractive break here, and honestly, guys, I've been seeing a bunch of positive news surrounding Square, and uh, a bunch of analysts. Although this, you got to take this with a grain of salt, but a bunch of analysts out there, they've been raising their price targets on Square, and honestly, I'm bullish on the overall. Um, what is it? The uh, uh, fintech space. Fintech. You guys know fintech like Square, PayPal, um, even Mastercard, Visa. You can consider them fintech tech as well. You know, these are companies that I'm personally just bullish on long term. So for Square, I think 71 to about 75 bucks, that's the tradable range that I'm looking at here. And for me personally, guys, I actually bought Square today. I think it was at around 71.20 initially, right around here I bought a little bit. And I think I bought a little bit more at about 70, uh, maybe like 70, 90. I bought two individual times here. We actually dipped uh, in the red. I was down not a lot on my position, but I was down a uh, little bit on my position, about 1, 1 1.2%. But I held through it because me, with how I swing trade, I don't buy in all at once. I buy in a little bit, then as it continues the uptrend, as it continues pushing up the way I wanted to, according to my plan, you know, that's where I add a little bit more money. And as of now, I'm in with a little bit on Square, I'd say about 20, uh, maybe 25% of my goal position. And I'll probably add more if it tests maybe 72 bucks. And we'll see what it does there on Monday and heading into next week. So the next trade that I made today was Netflix, guys. I actually sold out of my position. And this is one that, again, I called out on my Instagram yesterday. A lot of people in the community, the Discord community, the Strive Smart community, which is, again, linked down below in the, in the description box, a lot of people have been talking about Netflix. And they reported some solid earnings Um what was it? A couple days ago, they beat on EPS. I believe they had a slight beat on revenue as well, and their guidance for earnings is pretty solid over the next quarter. So the stock went from 324 all the way up to 359 in the span of less than 48 hours, which is insane. So for me, if you guys watched yesterday's video, you saw how I got in at around 330 bucks, bought a little bit more at around 335, I believe. And today, guys, I actually sold out after this big rally because this huge rally, guys. Um, honestly, there's no way I couldn't sell out after seeing such a quick rally. 
in, in, in about 30 minutes when the market opened. And as we got closer and closer to that resistance being that 360 level that we talked about. And I mentioned yesterday how that's where I want to sell close to that level at least. So I just liquidated the entire position at around 358 bucks. I sold out, I believe it was a little bit before the peak. I think it was right around here, um, 358. Then we peaked at about 359, sold off. And now it seems like we're holding 352 quite nicely. So for me, I locked in the profits now on Netflix. And now I'm looking to potentially re-enter and see what it does from here, right? Do we maybe cool off a bit, sell off maybe to back to 345, maybe 350 flat? Um, that could be an entry point. Or do we blast through 360 and maybe fill the gap to 380 on a momentum play from there? You know, 360 could be the entry at that point. So these are just some things that uh, I personally did today. And many people may argue that, Yes, yeah, Stas, you know, you're bullish on Netflix, then why are you selling out? Well, the truth is, I like locking in profits, right? And the gain of, let's just see the percentage really quickly. I, I don't even know, to be honest, how much on a percentage I made on this trade. Uh, let me take a look. So let's say my average cost was 333 up to 358 You know, that's a gain of around 7 8%, guys. So you're telling me in two days and a day, under a day, I get a 7 8% gain. I'm locking in profits. I don't know about you, but for swing trading short term, that's phenomenal, at least in my book. And I'm locking that in and I'm waiting for the re-entry. That's how I play kind of conservative and just keep just just um you know playing the game right it's all about playing the game in terms of that because let's say i didn't lock in here then netflix were to dump all the way back down on my cost basis it's like i missed out on that profit i could have made um and now i have to wait for it to go back up so you guys know what i mean by that it's just not what i like to do i like locking in and then waiting for re-entries that's kind of how i do it so um that's pretty much it in terms of you know any buying or selling that I did today. Some other stocks I'm involved with very quickly are Uber. You know, Uber didn't do Uber great today. They did pretty bad, down about 1.14% as of right now. So I'm slightly down on those shares that I did end up buying yesterday, but that's okay because this is a longer term swing for me. I'm cool holding it through this little mumbo jumbo we're seeing right now in the markets. Hopefully it will recover and my goal is to sell at around 40 bucks. That's the goal right now on Uber. So overall, guys, that is what I did in terms of my trading, some stocks that I'm involved with. Now, let me know down below in the comments what are your trading um, ideas, what, what have you been doing, any stocks or ETFs that you're interested in buying into, I'd love to know. So now, let me break down some stocks that I have for you all and some ETFs on my phone, starting off with INTC, also known as Intel. Intel, guys, I, I typed in Intel. No, no, Stas. Intel is INTC, not Intel. INTC, you guys can see Intel up 7.85% right now, up $5 per share. And although this chart does not look attractive right now, it's very overbought. RSI is about to fly off the page here. You know, it's still worth watching because if we get the pull down, you know, it could be a nice entry, a dip entry on the, the huge momentum to the upside that we're seeing here on Intel. And what really made Intel explode today, guys? Well, they crushed it on EPS. They reported EPS of $1.52 per share. And a year ago, I believe, based on my notes here, the EPS was at $1.28. And Faxet was expecting $1.25 per share this year. So they crushed it, guys. $1.52 versus $1.25 expected. And revenue came in at $20.21 billion versus the $19.23 billion. So when companies beat numbers on that type of scale, I mean, that EPS beat is very, very good. You know, typically, not always, but typically their stock does end up doing well either after hours um, in the morning depending on when they report and you can see 
That's what happened to Intel, and it's continuing this rally heading into the close of the market here. You can see massive gap up yesterday after market hours. The momentum uh, uh, held up. You know, it continued from around 67 up to almost 70 bucks, and now we're hovering at around 68 bucks. So for me, how would I end up trading this? Well, again, I'd need to see some sort of pull down. Maybe this is arguably the pull down, right? Am I going to enter it right now? Not yet, guys. Uh, not yet, to be honest. But this could be a pull down here, you know, at about 68 bucks. We're holding that EMA at a higher low. This is attractive, in my opinion. But since the big move, at least, was... Uh, potentially made not saying that there won't be another big move but since it already ran up so much on earnings here i'm scared that i might get caught up top um here maybe at 69 70 bucks and then it might end up selling off because we've seen that another company that's done that uh, not saying that they're uh, related in any sense, but, you know, is Qualcomm, ticker symbol QCOM. We saw last earnings report, not this one, but last earnings report, they ran up, they ran up, they ran up so much. I remember you guys uh, in, in the group chat, we were going crazy over this. The stock was up, I forget, like 15, 20% or something. And then if you were to buy here, hoping it goes higher, you would have lost because take a look, it dumped from 93 down to 80 bucks despite those earnings being phenomenal so that's kind of the approach i'm here um, i'm taking here with intel although they ran up i'm not looking to buy at the top here guys i'd rather see a little a uh, little uh, sell-off and then from there that's where i might consider entering on intc so gold guys gold today did well slash gc it ended up going up or it's up right now 0.28 percent up four dollars and 40 cents and this is because yes you get it because the markets were red. They are red today due to that Chinese coronavirus that is going on. So that's pushing fear into the market. What happens when people are fearful? They flood to gold. They flood to cash. They flood to, hey, maybe even Bitcoin. People have been putting money in Bitcoin lately, I've been hearing. And maybe even bonds, right? That's kind of what people do when they get fearful. So today we saw that uh, $4.80 pop in gold, which is why I personally like having a little bit of gold in my portfolio. Me personally, you guys see in my M1 Finance portfolio series where I'm building a portfolio from scratch, right? You guys see that 5% of that portfolio is in GLD, ticker symbol GLD. This is a gold trust. And you guys can see this one's up 80 cents today, up half a percent, while all of the other stocks, well, Probably most of the stocks in that M1 portfolio are red. This gold trust gives me a little hedge in there that usually does well whenever the markets are selling off. So keep an eye on GLD. Another one is GDX. This is a, a gold ETF and an ETF that's leveraged that trades based upon GDX is JNUG, guys. This is actually um, a 3x leveraged ETF. It goes up three times whatever GDX is going up. So it tracks GDX. Let's say GDX is up 2% today almost. JNUG should be up almost 6%, right? You can see it's up 5.2% to be exact. So as these markets are seeing a bit of volatility, you know, there's a bit of fear. The VIX is up $1.60 today. Just keep an eye on gold. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Keep an eye on gold. Keep an eye on GDX, GLD, JNUG. These are what I usually trade, um, you know, when the markets are going crazy. Now, back to what I said earlier today. There's this company that had a location close in China, and that company is Disney, guys. Ticker symbol DIS. They, ch uh, they closed their Shanghai park, like I mentioned earlier, due to the fear of the coronavirus. And they actually made this uh, public today on their website on Friday. And quote unquote, this is what they said, guys, in response to the prevention and control of the disease outbreak. And that makes sense, right? Disney, it's a public place. People are going on rides. People are touching everything. You know, you know, uh, you know what I mean, right? You're using the, the, you know, the roller coaster. You're using the bathroom, this, that, the third and things will spread. So them closing that, that makes sense. But the stock, 
the stock did not like that. The stock is down 1.4% today, down almost $2. And now Disney, guys, you know, in terms of a trade, I don't even know what to say about this. You know, we broke 145, which was where I was hoping we'd hold and maybe and and break out from there, but obviously it didn't. We broke 143, which was another level of support that I was hoping it would hold. And now it seems like we're about to test $140, which if we were to break that level, guys, it might be a free fall down to, let's say, the next level, which may be around $135. So, you know, the price of Disney in the short term, the price action at least, it's going to heavily depend on their earnings report that comes out here on the 4th of February, right? And the fact that it is very oversold, you know, we are seeing a green candlestick forming at about 140 bucks, which again is a support level. This could be a sign of a short-term bounce-back play, maybe from 140 back up to 142.50. This could be a sign that it's forming at least, right? And that could be a trade that could be played maybe next week. And me personally, this is not the type of setup that I chase, but for you guys that like playing oversold stocks like this, this could be perfect, right? Maybe back again to 142. And another stock that's like this is Wells Fargo, which... Honestly, this is a bit more dangerous than Disney because they're going through a lot more um, negativity, I believe, you know, with the whole scandal that went on about a year or two ago. Uh, they fired their CEO. The company's going through transition. They reported earnings last quarter, 93 cents versus the $1.12 expected. Revenue came in at $19.86 billion versus $20.14 billion, which is abysmal. The technicals are a straight-up falling knife. So in terms of a swing trade, this is not looking too good. But if you guys are into value investing and you're into especially dividend investing, Wells Fargo is one that I actually have been adding into my M1 portfolio for just some banking expo exposure. And I think it's not too bad of a pick if you are one with a longer term mindset, maybe 5, 10 years, you like dividend growth stocks. This could be one for you. Off the top of my head, their dividend, I believe, is a 4 to a 4.5% yield, which is great. Payout ratio, maybe in the 50 to 60% level. Their dividend growth has been about 8 to 9 years. If you guys don't recall, a lot of banking stocks, they cut their dividends back in their recession. So I believe, or the Great Recession, that is. So I believe they've been increasing it since they got out of the Great Recession, that whole debacle. So this is one that it could be a long-term play here from a, div, uh, from a swing perspective. It's not looking too good for me. I need to see at least a break back into 49, 48, 49, 50 to even consider it. But for the dividend players out there, I'm one of them guys. I don't only trade. I don't only swing trade. I like long-term dividend passive income as well. Um, this is definitely one worth watching. So... Rapid fire here, guys. Facebook sold off today, $1.86, um, down 0.85%. We broke that 50 SMA. Heading into earnings, this is looking... Um, I don't know. This is looking a bit funky here. We're selling off, giving us, um, you know, a technical belief that we may sell off to 212 here, maybe 213, 215 in the short term, due to there not really being a green candlestick forming quite yet, and that leads me to believe that the sell off might not be done here in the short term on Facebook. But I really just believe that the overall market sell off today is obviously dragging down Facebook as well. So in the short term here, before earnings. Sure, I think that earnings could have a, a negative effect on Facebook if they go negative, but if the markets in general, they bounce back, maybe they go green on Monday. If the futures pop up on Sunday, heading into Monday and the markets pop again, I think Facebook should drag back up, maybe back to 220, 222 uh, with no problem, right? So Facebook there. And uh, the last one is going to be Neo. Actually, let's talk about two more. Neo actually sold off 30 cents today, but we are holding four. 50, which is a good sign here in the short term that we are holding an overall old, re old resistance as a new support. And beyond meat today, guys, 
actually did decent this morning. It seems like it was going to do well, uh, but it ended up selling off aggressively down from 126 down to about 116. So, yeah, watch these stocks, guys. They are definitely seeing some weakness right now. And if you are a person that likes buying into the weakness, this is definitely a time for you because if you see on the other side, let's say... You can see the other side of the tunnel. I don't even know if that's a saying, but you guys know what I mean. When it's when, when it's a red day and you can see the green ahead, you're like, okay, this this is short term. I'll put some money in and then I'll make money when when you know it, it turns green again, when it blows over. This is a perfect time for you to buy. Not saying that it's definitely going to turn green, but um, there's a chance that it will, right? So this is definitely something to consider beyond me. Neo, all of these other stocks, and I'd love to know what you guys have to think about them and any other ones that you're trading down below in the comments section. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, feel free to go down below for me and hit that like button and also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to claim your two free stocks from Webull valued up to 1400 bucks with a simple deposit of $100 into the account. And that affiliate link is linked down below in the description box. So thank you all for watching the video, for all the support as always. Hopefully these markets bounce back on Monday. I sure hope do. Uh, they do. It's going to be interesting to say the least. Hope you all have a fantastic weekend. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, guys.